Hey, hey, welcome to the Summit Host Hangout Podcast, where you'll learn how to host a high converting virtual summit that leads to your biggest signature offer launch yet. I'm your host, Krista from Summit in a Box, and I am so excited for you to hear in this episode how our guest used her first virtual summit to grow her email list from 50 to 900 that's 18 times growth, people, brought in five figures in revenue and has led to just all kinds of wonderful collaborations with speakers, thanks to giving them a win-win collaboration opportunity, which we're going to talk more about today. To give you some background information on our guest, she is a former psychotherapist, mom of soon to be three, actually, when this episode goes live, you'll be a mom of three. And she's an author. Using human design and EFT tapping, she supports ambitious, sensitive women, create success from the inside out, and focuses on the subconscious blocks we can carry that get in the way of taking the action and making the change we say we want. She is the host of the Sensitive, Spiritual, and Successful podcast and the creator of the Ultimate Human Design Summit. Without further ado, let's dive in and talk with Jazz Malin. Thank you so much for being here, Jazz. I'm so excited. Thank you. Like I said, before we started, I've been following along for so long. I think I did your five-day challenge. And then I was like, told my husband, I'm like, all right, this is it. Pulling the trigger. We're going. And then it's time. Here it is. <laughs> I'm on the other side. <laughs> I love that so much. Before I want to hear like, okay, what made you tell him that? But first, tell us a little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, of course. So I'm Jazz, like you said, going to have three babies, two months, I'll have a third. Yeah. I, after having kids, I just shifted so much of how I approach work. I started to just do things that lit me up because I needed enough mental and emotional capacity. Like I stay at home with the kids. Right. So, and I also felt this like potential inside of me that I'm like, I, I want to go after that, you know? So I was kind of like delusional enough to say that I could do it all. I want to homeschool my kids and make a living. Yeah. So in my private practice, we all went online, you know, in 2020. So then I started exploring what was possible. So yeah, I would consider myself a soul success coach. I don't know. I have a hard time defining myself. I use human design and EFT tapping. And I guess the long winded version of why I chose to do what I do is that I believe that true success really comes from aligning to your authenticity. Obviously, I've helped many people in counseling. And what I've seen over time is that there are so many beliefs that we internalize. <laughs> you know, we come, be we become so used to abandoning ourselves and like just being hard on ourselves. So my work is really inspired by people wanting to change a pattern in their life and actually sustaining the change, which is like building self-compassion and staying true who they really are and rediscovering parts of themselves that they've abandoned. So I've had the privilege to work with a lot of people from all walks of life. So in my work, I've worked with extremely successful people, you know, making $300,000 a year and all this stuff. And they still struggle with self-worth, attachment issues, relationship issues, money issues. And so I just, why I do what I do is because I want people to find that inner fulfillment and being happy with who they are and just enjoying the ride of life, whether it is, you know, going after your ambitious goals, but doing it from a place of like internal alignment. So yeah, that's me. That's what I believe. And that's what I do. <laughs> I love that. And I would imagine that a lot of that came up throughout your summit process. So I definitely want to talk about that as well. I would imagine there's a lot of good stuff in there. So let's rewind to when you said that you told your husband like, all right, it's time. It's happening. What made you decide that it was time? What made you decide to host your summit? I just felt like this pressure inside of me, maybe because I have, you know, I was pregnant too. And I'm like, I can't, you know, I don't want to run a program. I don't want to, you know, I've been backing off a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients and I'm like, I've been dreaming of this. And I felt like a lot of my inner work that I did before being able to plaster myself all over, you know, the internet was like, I'm the host of this. My biggest fear was being seen. <laughs> so I've worked really hard on that, like to put myself out there. And so eventually I came to a point where I was like, okay, I think I can do this. I'm going to do it. He's like, all right, let's go. Like, he's so supportive, like probably too supportive. He's like, okay, let's go. Let's do it. Do it. Let's see you do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me work on my fears. But yeah, that was, it was really like that pressure of just what do I want to do? I'm ready to embark on a new way of doing things. And let, let, let's go big. Let's go big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You definitely did. Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. So what were you hoping to get out of it then? Uh, what was I hoping to get out of the summit? 
Yep. Honestly, because I did it on something I was so passionate about, like human design, I wanted the connection collaboration. I felt like I was in this field where I was like admiring, you know, these human design experts and teachers and stuff. I'm like, man, I wish I could put myself out there, but also I can't create content the way, you know, there's people out there. I have two kids at home, you know, it's chaos all the time. So I'm like, I can't be making all these, like putting myself out there in that way. I don't want to create all that content that doesn't feel good to me. So what I really wanted was, yeah, like that connection and collaboration and for people to see like I belong in this, I don't know, field, I guess, in this arena with these wonderful, wonderful people that I look up to. So, yeah. And I also knew I was going to do an all access pass, like obviously the revenue, you know, the money that you make is is really cool. But my favorite part was actually sharing it with my speakers because I came from a place of not having you know, not a lot of people to like, I don't know, send my emails to. There's like 50 people. People don't know me. My book's not actually out on shelves yet. I don't, didn't really have a name for myself. So we all brought in that money and then me sending them like the affiliate commission. Like that was so fun for me. Like, it was like, thank you guys. I'm so grateful for your audience, like what you've built that I was able to give you this platform and share, you know, everything that we've created together. So I would say, yeah, like connection, collaboration, bringing people into my community. In terms of selling, if I go into that a little bit, I didn't actually use any of the deadline stuff. (laughs) I wanted to experiment with that just because I'm somebody who takes a long time to decide. So I just kept telling people, this is the offer. These are the details of what's in the offer. And the cart closes on, you know, so-and-so date, decide what's best for you. Just so you know, the cart is going to close, but like take the time you need. And so I was really surprised to see that a lot of people still, you know, bought the packages, but I also do wonder what it would be like if I did use the pressure, but I don't know if I would, I I don't know. I'd have to, (laughs) I'd have to see, but yeah, everything. Basically I got everything that I wanted out of running the summit. It was like amazing. (laughs) I love that. And I remember feeling a similar way after my first summit where, well, I do remember I was like totally floored by the revenue because I had never made that much at once before, but especially now coming out of it, like the connections and the impact are the pieces that stand out. Like the numbers are exciting the first time you look at them and, you know, it feels great, but the things that feel good and pay off and mean anything long-term are those connections. And I love hearing that that was so impactful for you. Like that's what I did too. My first time, I'm like, nobody knows me. Let's see if this works. To then, like, having friends and people you're like randomly sending money to. Like, when did this happen? And I love hearing that you got to experience that. That was exactly it. That was exactly how I felt. I'm like, wow. Like, and I had, I know we'll probably get into it, but the founder of Quantum Human Design, who like writes all the books, she agreed to be a part of the summit and she was the keynote speaker. So that was like wild. Like, I was like, oh, first summit and she's a part of it. Okay. (laughs) That's a pretty big deal. (laughs) I must have pitched it really well or something because I was not expecting that. So yeah, it was bigger than I, yeah, bigger than I thought. (laughs) That's amazing. Okay. Like, and I I do want to get into the the speaker stuff a little bit more. I know you said your speakers really showed up and you were able to make it into a win-win for both of you, which is always my goal. But like, tell me what you feel like made that possible for you. What did you do that made that win-win happen? Yeah, I think the, I think for my speakers, the 60-40 commission split was so great. I know that these speakers, you know, they've created a lot of programs. They've created a lot of great things. And so when I said, okay, I'm going to do a $97 premium summit package or whatever, like they really came through with what they offered the people who registered I was like floored by it. So yeah, the 60-40 commission split was worth it. They were very happy with it. And I was just really, because I'd been following them, a lot of them for a while, I was really, really like into hyping them up. I created an Instagram page and I just said, I don't like creating content, but when I was creating like my posts of hyping them up, I was excited about it. I was like, look at this amazing speaker. Like, look at what this person does. I've learned so much. And it's cool because I could talk from my own experience. I don't know if I'll be able to do that every time, but this one in particular, like the speakers, I was like, I've learned this from this person. Like I've been, I followed her for so long and I'm so, you know, I admire the way she leads and I could really speak from the heart when it came to my speakers. So it was really, really nice for like, for me to do that. It was like a win-win 
in a way that I could like hype them up and, you know, give them this good commission split. And it was just like such a great group of speakers. I couldn't be like, they were just amazing. I love that so much. And I feel like that's something we lose. I think the more summits we host, the more pressure we put on ourselves. And then when pr- when time for promotion comes, we're so focused about just getting the promo out there, promoting the summit, making sure people know it, that we lose like the true excitement that you felt this time. And I hope that you can keep that. And I hope the rest of us can get a reminder of that too. Like, look at these people you have lined up for your summit. That is so cool. So cool. And even if like, you know, Jazz, in your case, when you get to where maybe you're pitching people you don't know in the future, well, we do a little research first. And we, you know, and we do that before we pitch. There's something before we pitch that catches our eye. And like, that is still something we can get excited about. And when we're excited, our audience is going to be more excited. And that made me curious, what did you look for in your speakers? Because I know you're like very passionate about all of them. Yeah. So in the field of, you know, like human design, I just really love teachers who were, you know, in integrity, really cared about people, framed it in a way, you know, when you learn about yourself through the lens of, you know, anything really, but human design. I love the way that they framed things, that it was positive, you know, that it was focused in that way so that everybody could learn human design in a language that was like loving and compassionate and they could take that forward. Whereas, you know, there's other And that's everybody's journey. It's not right or wrong, but just the way they taught really resonated with me. And, you know, I just really love them as a person who was a leader in the field. And that's what I saw. And you know what? And if I didn't know the speaker, like I had topics in mind of how I wanted things to kind of flow day one, day two, day three. I actually just asked some of the speakers, hey, do you have anybody who you would recommend for this topic? So there were some speakers that I wasn't familiar with, but I would ask the speakers that I did know, hey, who do you recommend for this? And I got connected with a lot of great people. And like you said, I looked at their profile, I did some research, and then I just like decided from there and it worked out really well. So I I didn't, you know, send out a form of, hey, pitch yourself to me. It was like very internal, like, who do you think would be a good fit for this? I trust who you recommend. I love that. That that does always feel better. And yeah, you can feel confident that the names you're getting and the people you're reaching out to are, are good people. And I think you had said, maybe in the form you submitted, that you had them all on your podcast too. Is that correct? Yeah. Wow. Was this before the summit or after? This was before. I did one after because I still left it open. I was like, of course, if you want to be on the podcast, please. But my husband's idea, actually. Wow. Props. He was like, you know, you should interview your speakers so that people get to know them. And I love that because that's who I am. I love getting to know people and sharing like the stories people have have. We admire people from this top of that's what they've achieved and that's what they've done. And of course, that's what we're inspired by. But I love hearing about the journey of how you got there, you know, because I feel like I was like working on that for so long that I'm like, this is the stuff people need to be helping other people with. It's like that deeper stuff to actually get you to that point. It's not just that point that people just see and admire. Oh, good job. So my husband's like, yeah, why don't you interview them? So of course I was like, great idea. I sent out an email, eight, you know, eight people was like, yeah, let's go. So like the next day I was doing podcasts, editing it. And I just scheduled all of these interviews and I put them out before the summit. And I think, I don't know if we said this yet, but I did the summit in like 60 days. I didn't do the full 90 days. So I was, it was worth it though, because then I got to connect with the speakers on a deeper level too. So not only did I get to show people like who they were and why I love learning from them, but also share their story. I was able to like connect and like you said, kind of make those friends. And it's so fun to have people that you can actually talk like human design with. Like, am I sure my whole family and friends are like, okay, Jazz, like (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Like this is not what I'm into. But to actually have like a group of people that like understand what you're talking about, it's really nice. Yeah. And I'm sure that got them more on board and more excited for the summit as well, which I would guess, you know, had a part to play in in the growth you saw because of course they're excited to share this awesome event from someone that they now have this relationship with. So it definitely helps from that standpoint as well. And I do want to circle back to what you said about the 60 day timeline. Like I generally recommend 90 days and I tell people, let's not do it faster. You can, but you might like, you might regret it a little. You did it in 60 days. Your first time uh, you did all these interviews with your speakers and you're a homeschool mom. And I just need to know more about how 
that went and if you would do it with that short time frame again. Well, I would never want anyone to feel like they have to do what I did, but like I would wake up at like three in the morning, five in the morning. Well, this is like, I was excited. Yeah. So it's different. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I have to do this. Like, oh my God, I got to get this done. And it's so fun. And I get to like figure out how to like, okay, this email sends out at this time. And like, I don't know, I had a lot of fun, but I think the key to it being fun for me, it's based on my human design. I'm here to respond. And so when I had your templates and you're like following everything, it was like creativity. I was like, oh yeah. And then I want to say this. And then you're not starting from scratch. And I think that was really key for me. It really activated my creativity. And it was like, okay, if I didn't know what to do, I could just fall back on obviously what you lay out for us in Summit in the Box, but it was just fun and exciting. What else could I do? What else can I knock off this list and like create? But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for everybody because if you don't have that type of energy, <laughs> don't, you know, it's okay. But would I do it again? <laughs> Probably because <laughs> that's just who I am. <laughs> it does seem like your personality. I get this. I am like, yeah, once I decide something, it might take me a long time to decide, but once I'm in, I'm in and I want to like, see it through. And if I'm really excited about it, that's like the energy behind it. It's like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. So kind of, you know, maybe people would say neurotic, but it's all good. It works out. And then, yeah, so I do stay home with my kids most of the time, set up some independent play. My husband works shift work. So he would like, you know, take the kids to his parents' house and they would go hang out somewhere. And I would, he's like, I could leave you alone, and you would be working for like 12 hours straight. Like you, it just seems like you're just really dialed in right now. I'm like, oh, I am so dialed in. <laughs> like you can just leave me here. I don't, I won't eat. I won't sleep. And then I'm like, no, I'm pregnant. I need to like yeah. move around. I need to eat. But if I wasn't pregnant, I couldn't imagine <laughs> what I would be doing there. Just so yeah, I don't expect anybody to, you know, maybe, un maybe they understand, but it's okay if they take it at your own pace. Do the 90 days. <laughs> Did you like incorporate any of your EFT tapping or any uh, anything else you do with clients or teaching into your process? Yeah. So I think le no, first knowing my human design, I knew that once I got lit up by something, it would activate like all, like it would just utilize a lot of my energy. And I felt that for like the very first time in human design, I'm a right angle cross of planning. So it's like all about details and, and following step by step. And I'm like, whoa, this just unlocked like so much of my potential that I knew it was in inside of me, but I didn't know where to like channel that energy. So running a summit and the way that you laid everything out for us so perfectly, it was like detail, detail, follow this, follow this plan. <laughs> and I was planning something, right? And EFT tapping. Oh yeah. There was like waves of like, oh my God, this sucks. This is going to suck so bad. I'm telling you, I was excited, but like, I'm like, am I the only one who's going to be excited? You know, I, and I, you know, the human mind, it just gets at you. And you warned us about this though. So I'm like, no one's going to sign up. There's only 40 people signed up or like, I, so I had to like really work through the emotions. And I think that's part of what like finding that inner fulfillment stuff is. It's like you recognize that you're thinking this way, but then I had to shift my mindset to be like, but this is so fun for me and I'm learning so much. And it, the experience in this all is going to be worth it because like I said, I, I've never felt my energy so happy and excited and utilized in this way to create something, this collaboration and connecting with all these people. And like when the summit ran and there was, you know, so many people in it and people were sharing on social media, tagging the speakers being like, I love this talk from the ultimate human design summit. And I would see that. And I go to my husband and be like, I built that. Yeah. Like I was just so happy that I'm like, that was, that's me. That's my, that's my summit. People are hyping up the speakers that I pitched and like put on there. So it was really, really cool. Like, so yeah, EFT for like I use tapping to tap through all that like inner critic stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I would just, it would shift my mindset back to like, look at who you've become to be able to do all this. I love that. That's so cool. I love that you're able to put what you do into practice. Yeah. In a summit. That's great. So 
Oh my gosh. I love so much about what we talked about today. And I know we could probably talk for hours about it, but let's wrap it up. And I want to hear, do you have any like biggest takeaways you'd want listeners to get from either what we talked about today or something else that didn't come up that you experienced? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that I want everyone to know is like for so long, I felt like a nobody. And I know Krista, you shared that too, where you're just like, Hey, <laughs> like I, I have these skills and this knowledge, but like no one knows who I am. And I really, like I was creating, like I said, I'm writing this book and that was really cool. I self-published an EFT tapping planner for goal setting and all that stuff. I did all of that. And then I'm like, oh, you got to market it. Like people need to see your stuff. You're like, you're doing, you're creating and it's fun and exciting. And it's like, okay, but now what's my next step, right? And so, I don't know. I know people listening to this too can probably relate to feeling like a nobody and having this potential and create all these great things in their life that you just need eyes on. And it wasn't really until I started to believe in myself that I could like take this jump. So I just want people to believe in themselves when they're like doing something new, something big. Like I said, two years ago, I would have been scared to put my name and face all over the internet. But yeah, just look for that internal alignment, find things that excite you and go from that energy. Just know that there's going to be ups and downs all the time. Like even though you're super excited, it's okay to think like what you're creating might suck. People might say, might judge you. Like that's just so normal. The mind trying to keep you, your mind and body trying to keep you safe, Mm -hmm. right? From change and uncertainty and all that stuff. So your dreams and your goals are possible. And yeah, that's that's what I would say. I love it. And use EFT tapping if you can. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Pro tip. <laughs> Where can people go to learn more about you and what you offer? Yeah, so jasmaylin.com, J-A-S-M-A-Y-L-I-N. It's all listed there. Sometimes I run community tapping groups. I actually just ran one this morning. And yeah, like you can find me there. Amazon is where you can find my planner, Tapping Into Aligned Action. And yeah. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for being here. This was so great. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. For show notes and resources and links to all of Jazz's stuff mentioned in this episode, head to the link in the episode description. Now go out and take action to plan, strategize, and launch your high-converting virtual summit.